afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting from the Castle. Me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Heroes like Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to an exciting, riveting, amazing episode. With me, your host, Imperial Dane. We are off here to a one versus one on crossroads between the South. We got the FLO fighting for king and country, the Commonwealth, the Seventh Armored Division, the Desert Rats. Versus in the north, we got Jessalyn fighting for the Bear March, Germany. Rolling out here with the 21st Panzer Division. And we got Lightning War, Elite Troops and Jaeger Infantry for Jessalyn with Triple Infantry versus Earth Special Weapons, Mobile Assault and Vanguard Operations. With Infantry, Sapper and Universal Carrier Bulletins. Interesting choices there from Refero, who's going for a triple section build there. Versus a double pioneer stop by for Jessen with Grenadiers, allowing him to see some more territory in the early game, but obviously not quite as well fight for it. For versus the Brits being able to use the see more territory in the early game can have its benefits, and they do in some ways tend to be a bit slower. So, very interesting opening here from Jessen. Not the one you usually see from the Wehrmacht, but I have seen a few sort of the higher ranking Wehrmacht players uh, slightly branch out into sort of uh, more pioneer heavy openings. Noting though, no machine gun for Jessen, which does mean any engagement can risk becoming a bit one-sided since gun units can't really fight the infantry sections favorably. And this is really where you need MG42s or snipers somehow you know turn of things around. Well maybe a mortar can also work, but I personally prefer the MG42, some prefer the sniper. Point there makes short sandbox up in the center. We see the left slowly advancing up northeast. Section approaching the pioneers there by the northern strategic point. Gonna lose quite a number two got gonna lose engaged with the section here, need to fall back, might try and support the pioneers in the west, pioneers falling back. Second gonna lose quite a pioneers continuing eastwards. Noting here that Earth is focusing westwards into the cemetery there, putting more pressure there, might might imagine is where Jessen's gonna be focusing, but Jessen again's got pioneers heading eastwards, so you can put some pressure in there. Section falling back, pioneers gonna lose hanging the down, other section being hit, pressing the gun leaves here, might fall from hold down a bit. We try and pursue the section, looks like he's doing gunners moving in from one side, Pioneer's gonna flank in from the other side, good work there for Jessen. Bickers on the way for Refro and the guard, the 7th Armoured Division, not the Guards Armoured. Gunners moving in to support here, taking advantage of the section, not pushing in as fast, and there you go, flanking in. In the south, Pioneer's going to go Eastern Fuel Point, and we got a third Gunners squad here for Jessen. No machine guns have yet, Pioneer suffering by the Gunners, allowed, allowed to close in for, because of the Pioneer sacrifice. Very good move there by Jesselin. His car font is exposed, but so far it seems like Refro is not particularly concerned with that. In the south part, he's here drawing fire from the section, even instead of grabbing the eastern fuel point. Western big security, and then he's now sweeping westward, eastwards. Blah. So a lot of aggression action here going on. A lot of bold movement from both players in the first three minutes of the game. Outstanding work. Point there being secured, point here being secured. Gunner is moving up here. And nothing further going on in Jessalyn's base. Could consider an MG42 or more to suit, or just more grenadiers. In which case, they have four grenadier double pioneers build. Which is not certainly a build I see very often. I certainly can't remember the last time I saw it. And there you go, going for the triple grenadiers, double pioneers, mortar. Interesting. It certainly feels like an aggressive sort of uh, type of build there. Though again, even my MG42s, you can play aggressively. But certainly, double pioneers, triple grenadiers, and mortars has a certain uh, aggressive flavor to it. Much more assault oriented. No upgrades there for Refro's forces have yet. No grenades, burnt guns, or boasted sections. We do, of course, have tech up there, and there could be some fast sappers or a sniper here to try and counter Jessen's tactics. Jessen further following up here on the aggressive assault tactics with elite troops, which is certainly one of the more assault oriented doctrines with the Model 24 stun grenades, G43s, plus stormtroopers. So, very aggressive push there again from Jessen here from the Wehrmacht. The 21st Panzer Division. Back here, bunkers going up there for Jesslin. Mortar opening up here in the house, pushing back machine gun. Section having assault, assaulting the Gunnadies, but out in the open. They're actually a bit in the trouble with the Gunnadies and heavy cover. Good lord, we got no cover here. We should probably make some. What, we're under fire? All right, we locate some and then we shoot at them, but I don't think there's any nearby. Oh, stop being such a pain in the ass, Terrence. Point there being secured, section falling back. There's snap on the way for Refero. Medics up there for Jesslin. Noting um, no tech up as of yet, this could possibly indicate he's going for a tier 3 rush with this kind of build, in which case of course the Stormtroopers could very well act as a improvised anti-tank team if necessary. And Refro is indeed planning a sniper here versus Jessalyn and his aggressive infantry tactics. We'll have to see of course if he realizes how bad he might be in for it once Jessalyn begins to hit him with concussive grenades and G43s. He is yet I think to utilize any of that. He can't go for the G43 ship, but they are of course concussive grenades now. Still no take. In fact, he's going for a fourth gun in his squad. Double pioneers, four gun in his one mortar versus triple sections, a sniper, and vickers, and now sappers. 
So this is definitely looking at a tier 3 rush from the Wehrmacht, which is sort of the uh, common strategy at the moment amongst the Wehrmacht players. Or at least what increasingly a common strategy, it's not the, but it's certainly one of the more popular ones. So now a fire here against the Grenadiers down to two men. Telemann's going up here to guard himself against any AEC rushes or anything else because they have to cover the eastern fuel. And he's going down here to meet taking loss here from the section, helping in mining up his calf points. So both players are obviously worried about the other bastard rushing them down. Now you go more far right there, hits the truck, use some of the section's members slightly dinged up, and nothing too bad. Sniper from up. One kill so far, and that's going to be two kills. Now they fall slightly back, they're a bit worried about Jessen charging in like that. Quite worried it would seem. Yes, and there's I think yet to take up at all. I mean, you can actually at this stage just push straight ahead for tier three at least in terms of tech. Though the support McCall will still have to wait a bit. Zapper section moving in here. Continue to try and hunt the sniper. The sniper staying at a very cautious and safe distance. Mortify continuing to rain down like uh, very heavy raindrops. Six pound gun flying up the forever throw. He is uh, seemingly not anticipating ref Jessen trying to pull a tier 3 ref, though so far Jessen's not rushing too much. But there you go, elite troops has been revealed. Will this cause ref to change tactics, or will he stick to the 6 pounder gun? Right about either the 2-2-2s two -two or a flame for a half tank, because that's really the only reason to go for it at this stage. When your opponent is, you know, going for what he's gone so far. I mean, he should have seen a lot of gun ideas, and so far no sign of the like to make a nice company, so I mean... At some stage in the near future, Ref should begin anticipating uh, Jesslin pulling it to your three rush. But again, Jesslin is, uh, despite having the resources, not taking up at all, not going for it at all. Another 24 stun grenade. G45 is also going up. Section AC dodges it. And there uh, go Force Retreat. More grenades getting G45 there for Jesslin for Germany. Deutschland. And still no take up there for Jesslin. I mean, he's got 159 fuel, 160. He could easily just push ahead there. He's got 130 fuel there, needs a tech, so he could still go for that and have 30 fuel to spare, which boys can build the Spomer quite and rush ahead. But now he's losing the Western fuel point as he's wet, more or less abandoned the entire Western side to push up these now with his Grenadiers and Pioneer it. But there's a counter attack force moving up westwards there. Heavy damage being inflicted. No sign of take up still. One section with Pulse. In the west here, we got the Pioneers going to be up. We got a mine down there on the victory point. Good work there by Refero. In the seventh armored section with Pulse. Going to these continue to advance. Three squads plus the Pioneers. Weak effort here in the west so far against uh, Refero, I'd say. Oh, Refero, by the way, on the other hand, is losing no time in rushing ahead. He's already there going for the company command post. And of course, this is a bit of an important thing to mind about Crossroads. It actually has slightly more points than usual, so it's actually a map where you can actually end up taking up much faster than you would on other maps. But to actually gain a map advantage, you can gain a severe advantage of your opponent, so you can actually really rush ahead there for medium armor. And this is basically what Refler is doing right now. He's taking advantage of the fact that Crossroads has slightly more fuel points than average, and it's going to try to rush ahead for medium tanks. Jesslin, by the way, is finally taking up. They would definitely say he's been a bit too slow about that. I'm going to rule something that does tend to undercut a tier 3 rush strategy is you are not rushing for it hard enough. So there's a certainly a risk in particular versus the Brits who can just more naturally rush ahead due to a real low attack cost but also just less management like you just press a button you get the tech you get the structure at the same time the Wehrmacht do have the separate tech and then you have to build buildings. And that really just means you know, when you're trying to rush as the Vermont, you really have to just keep a sharper eye on it. Otherwise, you risk things uh, going slightly awry. Back here, the reinforcement. And there you go. Tier 3 on the way. Fine here for Jesslin. Germany. Mortifier there. Not really hitting so much here for Jesslin so far. Sapper section moving in. 6 pound gun rate to support. I mean, both players are essentially rushing for tier 3. It's just Refro's anticipating Jesslin not doing it, it seems, or somehow being really, really fast about it. But so far, again, Jesslin's not quite achieving being really, really fast about it. And he's pulling in there, sorting the section here. Swarming it, in fact. Refro managed to save the section there before it gets utterly annihilated. And there you go, he's rushing out Centaur. And this is going to be a real problem for Jesslin because the Centaur is really, really good. 
like insanely good at dealing with infantry, in particular in Russia the head, and he's getting here around ten minutes, and Jeslin's rushing himself for two feet, and as of course some of you might have noticed, he has got absolutely no anti-tank. Even he had a pack for the Sentai is actually really good at clearing out anti-tank guns head on. But there you go, the support McCoy's going up for Jeslin, so he should be able to rush out of Stug. He's gonna have to rush out of Stug because apparently four risks ah, being too slow. I mean even Stug is gonna be pretty slow, but uh, We'll see here, we'll see if Jessen somehow whether this uh, British armoured storm that's about to hit him. So yeah, Jessen rushing ahead for two threes, actually slowing the British players just going through the, all the tears then again. He didn't actually do anything there, so for all for intents and purposes, referee might as well have been uh, rushing as well. There you go, sent out here for Air Photo with its twin 20mm post and guns. And he's going for weapon racks as well. Good lord, look at all of these spren guns. Why were the crates locked before? Well, we haven't researched. Research? We already had them. Why do we need to research? Well, uh, unlocked. They're on crates. Do we need to spend all that resources on a bloody crowbar? Just shut up, Terrence. Gonna need being pushed back. They're sent out on the. On the loose, he's already getting two kills in a matter of seconds as he encounters the German army. Jessen is going for a pantafall, he's not pulling for the Stug. That is extremely cold blooded there by Jessen. Extremely cold blooded. I keep watching people deal with both infantry and armor, and he's thusly willing to risk it. There's the centaur. That is uh, incredibly ballsy. Ah, oh, the Telemine gets spotted. Good timing there by Referac to keep the Sappers there closer to you. Not with the Centaurs moved into hostile territory. Good work there by Referac. Tactically nice maneuver. Rolling straight here. The Mortar shredding it with the twin millimeter guns there. Good lord, I'm having so much fun murdering people. I guess this is what it must be to be a German every day. <laughs> Shut it, Terry. Panzer 4 on the way there for Jesselin. Panzer Kampfwagen 4. Oh, 7th Armour Division are moving in with its centre. Gonna hunt down those pioneers opening up there and merrily murdering away. 5 kills already. Well, the Nosman could have managed at the same time. Gonna swing against the section here. We got my pioneers from the north. Panzer 4 though is effect right here for the 21st Panzer Division. Which is a fun fact in Normandy. I only really had Panzer Force in its armored uh, battalion because it actually lacked one entire full battalion. Due to not having fully supplemented it with what's supposed to have. First thing shot at, sniped at. Panzer Force those ready here to engage the Tommies. Inslafen. Every final round, the few points up between both players. But for having suffered a section loss, is replacing these also got the sniper up out there. So far, 10 kills, our fleet of HNT2. Hitting these in a fuel point as well. What would Justin do next? Fuel caches, bunkers, stormtroopers. He's then got the option here versus El Efero. The Centaur's hanging back. Fun fact the Centaur anti aircraft tank's turret is actually from a Crusader anti aircraft tank. Whereas the Hester Hall was basically from the Centaur tank, which was sort of the intermediate tank between the Crusader and the Cromwell, which I actually never saw any sort of usage on the front line, fun fact. So the Centaur anti aircraft tank was sort of a uh, bit of a weird thing in many ways. Pantor falling back, they were taking a pen and hit there from the 6 pounder gun. Jason Zop has got no intent on suffering needless damage, but he's now going to kill both fuel points, getting a lot more fuel now than Refero. Very good. Pantor moving eastwards here, risking a bit more fun here with the British, who's now got a lot of Brengans up to tear apart their hands. Six pounder gun there being carted forward. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. Ground the centre victory point back here, troops reinforcing healing. Jason's base remains always quiet. He could consider some fuel caches, maybe he's going to float all that manpower. Try that way build up a more decisive field advantage long term versus the FLO. We can see there's definitely a difference here. I mean, he's getting 39, he's getting 19 fuel. I mean, that's normally it'd be more like 39 versus like 13. So there's like a definite sort of difference in fuel on this map. And of course, it also means you can just if you get more of the map kits, so much more fuel than they ever could in many other maps. 
Shug on the way there for Jesslin. Storm gets shots. Uh, Fro, I think, is. Uh, no. Seemed like he was going for something else, but apparently Jesslin's just been able to harass Ref for so much. He's not able to go for anything. He's got Pierce there flying through the sky, not, sky, not quite hitting anything. And another sapper section there for Refro. No sign of Doctor though from Refro. Nothing here sort of indicating anything. Center on the west there, engaging Grenadiers. Opening up, tearing apart the German Grenadiers on retreat. And we got the second in trying to get more additional damage in there. There we go. Almost got the wipe. Looks like one man escapes here. Very fortunate for Jesslin there, very fortunate. Pantherfall brought in big, supporting a big gun push in from the north, sweeping in and forcing away Refro's forces. Troops are healing and forcing more to hang back and there goes Sturm Geschutz. Drei Ausführung G mobilized for Jesselin. And he's got Panis going the point, he's got the Pantherfall moving ahead here. And there you go, engaging the Centaur, shoots and hits. Centaur going over a few hits, got eight. Kills their vets and do one. Pulling hit, we got the Sappers moving up with the Pierce. Gonna try and hold back the Panther 4, which is trying to do more damage to the center. But it's ultimately forced back here. Cannot afford to tangle that for long. Gonna be suppressed here around the center. Gonna be moving ahead, Stuttgart's machine gun ready. Panther 4 will need some repairs here from uh, Gislet's Pioneer. Floating almost trying to munitions, could go for stormtroopers with assault blobs. You could also begin laying down a bunch of mines. What are you planning? Is he planning to fall? No, nothing like that either. We got double sick pounder guns out here for Refro by to deal with the German armor. Ooh, straight into a lot of mountain machine gun fire. Plus the sniper there. This is a pretty bad development for the Grenadiers and the Castle Grenade, but. That's not really much of an impact, like he just did it because he could, I think it was more of a reflex than an actual and rational decision. Gun is being pushed back here, double section put at the eastern side, and we got a big push up here, which we see that ref was sort of something for a lot there. Gun is flanking, oh, ah, he could have gotten the sniper maybe, at least done a lot more damage than he did, but uh, still he's causing retreat here, nice flank here by Jesslin, catching him off guard, there we go, Vic has been caught in between the Panther 4 and the Stug, and he's going to reckon he's won the anti-tank guns. Very good here by Jesslin, very good. Actually out maneuvering uh, Refro's is hitting the sides of the map. Almost getting the machine. Oh, he got the machine gun. He got the machine gun. He could destroy it or he could seize it. Some nice strikes here from Jesson against the Refro. Very nice strikes. Looks like he's not gonna grab it or destroy it. Oh, there you go. He's gonna try and use the stupid to destroy it. Bit uh, hard though. But there you go, lands a hit. Probably got South Marine to try and not. Nab it back. Oh, he managed it right before the South Grab it. All right, lads, this. Oh, there it was. Never mind then. Pantherfall running back to dealing with the now much more vulnerable infantry sections. There's no six pounder guns in their nearby vicinity with which to deal with the Panzer IV and the Bren guns do absolutely nothing. Keep firing. We might give the gunner a headache at this rate. Stug bombarding. Panther 4 sweeping in there. Section losing a member there. Sapsling of Piet's got the sniper sword there with 16 kills. And we got a Cromwell there for Refero, who's still short of a doctrine. Still quite short. One another. Panther 4 over Jesslin. So there you go, Santa moves in quickly, sweeps away a few grenadiers in the afterlife. Grabbing the eastern field, gonna hit Panzer 4 there, eh, not doing anything much. They're fighting in the west. Not the best engagement there for Refro. He's going to need more troops and some armor to really push through there. And the question, of course, is maybe we should just try and push up here fast instead of just constantly pouring in effort here because that's kind of the most suggestion stuff is. It becomes a lot harder for Refro to make any easy games with just overwhelm units. In this case, able to punish Jesson pushing his gun is way too far ahead. Almost getting a wipe again, but once more, fast escapes. There he goes, stunning up the Stuk there with Snyder Fire Gun. It is flanking, but right in front of the center. Could even try and use strafing fire maybe to get a wipe. There you go. Oh, he got a wipe there, Jesson. 
Troops being hit there. Six on the gun crossbow. Stunned by the concussive grenade. Nice throw there by Jesslin, but I don't think that was fully worth the gun of the escort, to be honest. Not giving the center additional experience. Got the chroming up support. The Western push here by the section there. Good work. He almost getting a new squad more. That could be quite unpleasant there for Jess. He's actually flown a lot of munitions. And not really doing anything with it. Noise and manpower. That definitely feels like a bit of a mistake there by uh, Jess. Then. There you go. Straight engagement here between Panzer 4. Cromwell. Cromwell lands the first hit. That penetrates. Panzer 1 the hand bounces. Another shot there. Both penetrate as well. But the Panzer 4 calls now down to half health and high tilted out of there. Ref with those. In other most other ways, actually on the back foot, Ryan I needs to push ahead. He needs to try and you know, catch Jesson off guard, but again, just taking hang on into the base force of the strongest. Isn't necessarily gonna be, I think work out the best for Leffler here. He needs to try and outmaneuver Jesslin, you know, hit some of his more vulnerable units and wipe them that way. And a good flank with the center this way could be devastating. And there we go. To replace the lost gonna just get strong to the Panzer Shrek's. Interesting choice here. Would have figured assault rifles, but uh, seems like Jesslin is more than a a kitten panzer panzer mood the other six pan gun there for the throw stay on the doctrine for him though then it is waltzing straight into a lot of bren guns and unsurprisingly it's a pretty fatal waltz good hit in the panzer four down to half health already it's also halfway to vetsency too Stu being rolled ahead here Jesslin's base he Coming hive of heat medics and troops being reinforced. We got the crumbling again after the Stuke here. Flanky, very good work there. Sex moving up there. Stormtroopers nearby. Taking loss. They could because up in the G for a few help versus infantry, actually, since that just, you know, help offset the upgrade with the Panther Trek, actually. That's interesting enough. Most players will never go for Panther Treks and G for the fleets on the same Stormtrooper squad for whatever reason. I always found that a bit weird. Like, they love going for G for the fleets on some of them, but they'll never go for Panther Treks on it as well. Which is always weird. Are they stormtroopers of the 21st Panzer Division? Men who have seen much action, even in North Africa, though most of the division was actually lost down there in North Africa, so they did not get to evacuate. Most of the survivors were basically people who have been you know, on leave or in medical care. Fun fact. Fixing up the armor here. The 21st Panzer Division had quite an eclectic collection of vehicles in Normandy, including a series of French converted armoured half tracks and uh, assault guns based on French Hotchkiss tanks and self propelled artillery. Had a lot of interesting designs there. But there you go, wiping out our grenadiers. Stormtroopers coming in here, still no G for the fuse. There you go, catching up the centre, but they are exposed and theoretically could get them with the strafing when they've had the munition for it. Or strafing uh, fire, not strafing run. Scrambling a noise between the Panther Force section, Cromwell supporting. Mine went off, so at least they have more to hit. They've just made a bigger bang than usual. Jesslin is flying resources, he's planning it to four now. Going for a Panther, maybe? Strong Panzer? Panzer Werfer? Is there some other reason for him to floating uh, that much fuel and manpower at this stage? Instead of just going for more Stukes of Panther Force, which is what you might recommend. Rather than just floating resources, at least. But there you go, Panther engages, Cromwell shoots. And Fails to penetrate. And he's the section. Oh, white pine S mine field. Excellent work there by Jesslin. Utterly obliterated. Quite a loss there for Refero. Quite a loss. And there you go. Panther moves a bit costly around here, getting hit. Panther Force rolling back. Jesslin still. Uh, Floating resource, got another panther for there you go. Just more panzers. We got another six to replace one loss for Refro. No sign of a doctrine yet for Refro. No commando, no vanguard, and I mean mobile assault or special weapons. There's uh, certainly a lack of anything there going on for Refro. But you do feel there's a bit of a weaker movement there for him. Panther being shot at. Down to half health. Section almost done there for Refro. And we got Gunnidia Storms from We got the center, of course, nearby. And it is almost ready to turn. There you go, caught. Strafing fire here at the right place could do a lot of good. Against Jess, and it's not for him. But Dilbert seems like he's either not aware of it, he doesn't think about it. Are oh, we getting a lot of damage in the advancing storms from the Gunnidia's? 
16 kills by which makes it a overall faster now to rotate faster as well so that's certainly something there for Jason to be worried about here in the west going to versus a lot of sections he's repulsed Panzer four Stuck saying about here, troops healing reinforcing in the east, fuel secured. Quick attack up north here with the Panzer four on its own, bit risky there but Yeslin no support. And did suffer a few hits there, Raffro, is he planning another Cromwell or Firefly or is there something else going on there for Raffro? Is there something else going on? There you go, Cromwell's seeing getting good hit in the Panzer four there which is getting a pin on machine gun. Three Panzer Force, one Stug versus one Chrome, one Centaur, and several anti tank guns. In this regard, Jessen has a definite advantage in the armor department. He's got a real armored fist assembled here. Grab the center victory point, Panzer Force falling back. Turn points left for Jesslin, so there's something he needs to be careful about. And there you go, Rafa does go for the Firefly, but still, no darks in here. We're past the 20 minute mark, we're moving towards the 30 minute mark. And Rafa has yet to choose a doctrine. Sam back here, preparing to dig in, assist the German attacks. Moving up and bounding, hitting around to the section, they're providing line of sight for them. Stu Pencil moving in, gonna attack, and section falls back here in nice, orderly fashion. There, enemy threatening a capture point, mining up, guarding the eastern half of the map. Jesson approaches the center with Grandis and Panzer IV. Nothing further than just in space. Still getting veterans you want cover crumbling beneath the heavy fire of the German army. Stu Grenadiers, Panther Fall just hemming away there. Takes on the Crummel, Firefly ramming here. He's going to move to support the Crummel on the west here versus the Panther Fall and Stu. In the center, we got the Snapper there snapping away at uh, Jessen's Force in the east. There we go, two map strings in the mine and the center. Oh, could get a wipe there from Seuss, but he does not. He does not. More mines being laid down there. Panther West, we've got the crumbling in the Firefly support. He's going for the Panther Fall. Stu getting a good hit off the Pentacle needs to, oh Crom needs to be careful. There we go, another hit there. Oh Firefly misses the Stu. Stu quickly falls back. And he's got the Pentafall and the both Pentafalls so that is falling back here. Centaur with 18 kills. And uh, Jesslin's base, nothing further happening, no additional armor, no tag up. And Lefro continues to not choose a doctrine. He's got a Vickers on the way. Sandbags there being disrupted in their lane. Victory points are short, and there's moving it, sniper nearby. 29 kills. There you go, Centaur sending out. Murdering the gun, they're going to do going for the sniper, could he wipe, could he wipe, ah! Oh! that was really close there for Refro. He was rather slow than Uchini, and that could have been quite a costly affair for him in the west, though. The sword could choose there from Refro, being slowed down here by Jessen's armor, and not a lot of infantry, which is kind of being busy murdered in the center. And there you go. Pantwell's going over the section, need to get the Firefly up there, Sappers as well, maybe the Crom as well. Firefly shoots, misses, blows apart a tractor or something else. Either way, that tractor is history. Now he's putting it with double Panther Force and Fire Stug. Firefly is the target, Sappers need to fire. Oh, might lose a Panther Force, he might lose a Panther Force, he might have been too careless there. We got another Panther Force flank here, big assault here by Jason. Panther Force down, Panther Force down, going for the Stug here. Pant Firefly though is done, did not have the Firefly to or firepower to deal with all this armor here. So not the danger of going for Firefly against a German opponent with a lot of armor. It just can't pack enough of a punch and the six pounder guns were not ever moved over to support. So that he didn't have any sort of firepower for such engagement. 
And overall, Jessen got, I think, pretty well out of that one. Doing a lot of damage here to left throw. Doing a lot of damage. Six pounder guns, but still not reacting to any of this. Bring up Pierce to deal some damage. There we go. Finally, something happening here. We got the six pounder gun. One use one center on the move there for a left throw. Panzer Force falling back. Stormtroopers moving ahead. Straight to the center. The salts are not massively pretty there. But that was a pretty good engagement there for Jessen, just crippling there with those armored forces and punishing him there, I think. For clearly not being prepared for what was coming. Jessen, the continue to float resources. I mean, at this stage, you could probably get away with going for Panthers. Not really suffering much for it. Gunners getting hammered here by the center. Halfway to Vetsen, which is slow. Six pounder guns reposition, falling back. And a massive push here from the left front to the west. Massive section, sappers, snipers. He's just making one big push into the west here. Committing almost everything he has. Just we've been through there. Aggressive, bold, and rather risky. If Jason were to sort of deflect that pretty well, he could uh, deal a critical blow there to Lefro. But Lefro seems able to just repulse this and push it back. Jason's counter attack at least for now. Look to see if Jason may actually even got a smoke chain down here. Heading ahead there in the east, we got troops pushing ahead, but they got the centaur nearby. 21 kills, still no strafing fire here from Refro, and still no doctor. Superman 6 pounder grenade, support there, good, gets a good pending in the Stug, almost got the grenadiers here. Actually, looks like he's about to use it, but uh, had to stop. Still there, centaur's almost stretchy feet. We got storms coming up here, still no G for defeat for Jess and Storms. He's got a ton of munitions, like, there's no reason not to go for G for defeat on this uh, Panzer Shake upgrade to stop to resist laying down mines. Come on, Jesslin. Come on. Finding on the western field point, eastern side, there's been secured now by Jesslin's forces. Centaur and dying, it repairs, and we got a crumble on the way there for Refer though. Thirty-one kills there. Troops in reinforcing, repairing back in Jesslin's base. Not much going on in, in it. Much else going on in it. Still no tech up. Still nothing additionally. And still nothing happening with the munitions. So that could stand to perhaps be a bit improved there by Jesslin. Mortars just. Shooting away left and right, Cromwell almost down there for Lefado. That's intense work is happening on the Centaur to get it back in action. Lefado, by the way, still has not chosen a doctrine. He very much remains lacking in that department. I mean, he's really lost the advantages of anything here. I mean, most of everything has been unlocked in every doctrine. So, I mean, this stage, I just think it's utter indecisiveness there from Refro that he hasn't chosen a doctrine. Center to something up there. Go more commit to the west. We got it's Tiger Ace now available here for Justin. Tiger Race. Center there. Super close. If he tried strafing fire again, don't have an actually yet much. But if this time around, he always ends up seeming to get it in a bit slow. But at least he's trying to do it. And these gun is being flanked here with a section. Could get a wipe, they could get a wipe, there's any help here. Left for quite a bit, we could get it. And lost the six pounder gun crew. Panther all the flank, nicely sent him up just to try and shoot here. Pierce moving in, need to get the other six pounder gun in to support something. Almost got the Panther 4 down there, we go. Pierce, oh, center. I know touch what went down there, but other oh, Panther 4's dead. We got a Tiger Race out for Jesslin. We got a Tiger Race out for Jesslin. Center and Cromwell under fire here. Panther 4 with. Zips right past the six pounder gun. Six pounder gun needs to sit up there. The other need to turn. Cromwell down. Breathless lines are crumbling like a wet paper bag. In a storm. Uh, 
Six Punter Gun Crew is dead. Grab the Eastern Victory Point. Back center there. Super close to Vetsin E3. Lots of munitions there for Justin. Lots of fuel. Just not enough manpower now to really do anything with all the fuel. Continuing onwards with the Tiger AC8, Jesselin is fearless, he is confident. He is ready to stop some Tommies. Well, safe for the cuff one, catch the six pounder gun there, but he goes six pounder and shoots back, gets a pinch hit, and the front slammer of the Tiger Ace. Sexton and Sappers moving up with the PS and whatnot, firing their storms was nearby. There he goes, so Preston Centaur moves in there, could get a wipe, could get a wipe! Almost got it. Ah, gets away with a tiny sliver of health. Tiny sliver of health there. Very lucky there for Justin. He particularly could have avoided it. Might have avoided dropping up Panzer Shake for Refro, which would increase the chance of dealing with the Tire Grace. I mean, now he kind of needs a Firefly to have a better chance of dealing with the Tire Grace, but just with a lot of Panzer Falls out, there's not really much reason to go for the Ace of the Firefly. It's when you got single big targets, you need the Firefly. The opponent's going for a lot of Panther Force. The Firefly's just too weak. So they can't deal with large numbers. Nor is it designed for it. Center's moving in there. Catching the gun at the see it in heavy cover. Could get a wipe, could it get a wipe? Almost got the entire lot again. And I was also super close to Vetsony 3. We're talking. Seconds away, like sneezing a bit of a few Germans and they'll hit it. We got another six pounder gun by for Refro. He definitely watched those double six pounder guns up to have better chances of halting any German army, in particular the Tiger race. Panther Force up the eastern side. Close to its new two. Gonna be sending up here for some push with the cough on. We got Mines going down there to help protect it. Good work there by Refro. And we got a rough gauge setting it off. Oh, no, it didn't. It doesn't look like it did. Caging happens. It doesn't actually work. Nope, it didn't. There you go. Gunnings been broke out the center. Then we've got straight in fight. Oh! Ah, he chose the wrong spot. He chose the wrong spot. It basically was more like a warning shot there. Except a lot of warning shots right in front of the Gunnings. But there you go. That's in G3. Increased lethality there as the DPS goes up in the center. Stu goes straight for it. Six pound of guns. Another thing in nearby to meet the support. He got his pants forming up, but there he goes straight into the line of fire. The six pound gun grenade is supporting here as well. Six pound dealing with the two here in the east, west. Left with his back against the wall is so far surviving uh, Jesslin's attacks. He can also then go for that firefly number two if he wants to. We'll have to see if he actually does go for it. Stuke down repairs. Ooh, eight stu. Very good there for Jesslin. Very good. Sehr gut. Target's opening up the eight kills. Almost wiping uh, Refro's machine gun and the gun is finished it off. Further scrambling around the west side. Here we got the center opening up. Almost getting the storm. So this time mine goes off as well. Does not pursue. But well, there he goes, Section Sappers there, wipes out the Storms of Squat, leaving uh, Jess and Short Money for Squat. Goes saying, hey, we lost it, get sent in and maybe deal with that. Or maybe leave the Sniper to deal with it, got 35 kills. Gunny D Squad almost down here, bit of a loss there for the 21st Panda Division, he ends up losing two infantry Squats that fast. There we go, Firefly for Defro and the 7th Armored Division. Taking some damage there. Stu Panther 4. And we got more mines here to help protect the carve point. Therefore, it's very much on the defense. He's waiting to somehow get some enough damage in on Justin to push it. But you can see Justin's not going to content with that. He's going to try and attack. But Therefore's base, very good, very good. A nice shifting approach, so you should probably get the Tigress in to help deal damage with the Stug. But there you go, Firefly shoots and misses the Panzer IV. What rotten luck. What absolute rotten luck. Now we got the Ace Stug moving in, the Firefly falling back. 
เกิดเหตุเองเกิดเหตุอาเพียงแค่ and they go the ace to get the firefly the firefly barely managed to do anything before Jesslyn lit it on fire and completely unprecedented move they end up being quite costly there for referees he was not anticipating Jesslyn would have the guts to do that but uh, Jesslyn is clearly a different breed of armor player Tiger is pushing up the center game straight for the swoop so we got Texas and center they're opening up and the retreating gun Elise taking hit there from Tiger Ace Sniper dealing with a section 8 6 pounder gun here up oh so much care so much action there you go mine goes off Tiger Ace with the damage engine right from the 6 pounder gun other one moving in Sex Sap is moving in Ace pops smokes and tries to get out of there another series of hits that on the Tiger Ace and falls back Grabbing the Eastern victory point there, causing further bleed there against the effort and the Seventh Armor. Well, we got the center to the rescue. They're almost wiping out the Grenadiers, but uh, only almost. Effort for some reason never tries to actually wipe them out. They're on retreat with the center, despite I think having in several cases uh, good opportunities. And now he's trying, but uh, it's much too late this time around. It is much too late. Up to three anti-tank guns for Defo. Mines down. Set up hits there on the Panzer Four. Eight hundred munitions for Justin again. No mines or anything. Definitely feel like you could be doing a bit more there versus uh, Defoe. To be honest, you could be doing a bit more. Tigers with the six pounder gun. Both either failed to hit or penetrate the Tigers. Bad luck there for Refero again. And there we go. 42 minutes and almost 20 seconds into the match. He goes for special weapons. That is one hell of a late choice there for Refro. Not entirely sure that's going to work out for him. I mean, Tank Hunters this late into the game. I'm not entirely sure what he's hoping to do with them. Oh, hits a mine, hits a mine. Kill Pietz hit there, set. Tank Hunters moving from the other side. Mortify against the center, the sniper and the six pounding on the east. Trying to get off more damage against the Panzer Four with anti-tank grenades. Tigers arrives and he's got not enough firepower. We got the six pounder coming, but that's not isolated target here for the Tigers to deal with shoots and gets off a good hit. Their first reaction to this is too slow, and there we go, almost losing the six pounder gun to the Tiger Ace. Need to get more aggressive. He's too defensive versus Jesslyn. He's just allowing Jesslyn to make mostly choices. I mean, he can't really punish the echelon. I mean, gone for the Tigers and thus having less manpower. I mean, the was more aggressive. He just went for more wipes in the infantry and just tried to beat him out. He could able to turn the game around pretty aggressively because Jesslyn, with the Tigers out, can't replace losses that easily. But for some reason, Ref was just not trying to push any advantage he's got here versus Jesslyn. And trying to make an advantage. Oh dear, lost the six pound gun. It's almost losing the center. This is going to be absolutely critical. If we lose it here to Jesslyn, that's going to be critical. Stuka, they've been caught with the six pound gun. Down to less than half health. We've got Pierce opening up the Tiger Ace. Tiger Ace down to half health. Pushing in here, though, for King and Country. Bren gun drop. Support was there taking it down. He's got a damaged engine on the Tiger Ace. 22 kills. Snyder Fire there doing a bit as well. Second level is going to do this. Jason's forced to take a bit of a beating there. 400 fuel though. And 800, almost 900 munitions.
Troops are reinforcing healing. Quiet there. But again, Rafa could stand to be a bit more active versus Jesslin. Panther with 16 kills, ready to setting out. Fixing up the ace, do we need repairs as well? Fifteen kills in the mortar crew. Sap is mining up the entrance there. Of course, he's seen through Jester's tactics. He's obviously going to expect Jester to try and do that again. Forty-one kills on the sniper. Bit more than what the centre has managed. Secondly, caught. Between a bunch of guns attacking, six pounder gun for me. There you go, Santa moving in. Landing in more kills, and there you go, Panther moving in. We've got the six pounder gun, we've got sappers with PS ready and everything. Almost wiped the gun, but they do manage to get away. They do manage to get away. There you go, Santa going for the gun, but the fuel. And finding some movement in the far west again here from Refido and his seventh armor. And Jason goes for an Ostrin at this stage, an Ostrin flak panzer. Can't say it's a move anticipated there from Jesslin at this point. Would have figured maybe another Panzer IV, but uh, he goes for an awesome flak Panzer. Mines it off. You can see Raffles getting a bit more aggressive, a bit more bolder, a bit more assertive as Jesslin finally almost 50 minutes into the game. There's finally a bit more fire in uh, Refro, it seems. Partly because yes, he's got less victory points than uh, Jesse and I. And there you go. A lot down to the target ace there, putting it down to less than a half elf in a matter of moments. Or close to half elf, anyways. Pushing these, got Bren guns, got sent all the way to deal with the advancing German troops. Got 34 kills, there we go. Both gun escorts rapidly fall back. And then Gosman rolling in, his strength to the six pounder gun, which is veteran to three. Turret ring jam there, go, almost got it, almost got it. But not quite. A thousand munitions for Jesslin, a thousand munitions. I mean, admittedly, he can't really use it a lot. I mean, he can use it in mines, but he's not in a situation where he could really do a lot, I suppose, in some cases. Like, Raffle's mostly on the defensive, and, um, well, I mean, he doesn't have any doctrinal abilities you can spend munitions on. He's got no artillery call ins. His forces, <coughs> his forces are fully upgraded. I mean, right now, Jesslin's in the situation he can't actually use his munitions on anything, really, in most cases. So that is a bit awkward, I imagine. It's got to be a bit uh, weird for him as a Valmont player to be floating that much munitions because the Valmont, as a rule of thumb, generally does not. It's not like he's been holding back with the concussor grenades either. Okay, there you go, he's floating so much. Tigers on the hunt here, 29 kills. Then he's been caught around the center victory point. I mean, I'm sure Refro wishes he had that many munitions, so he could call in some artillery and some other abilities. Mines down. Therefore, keeps up the good work there. Peer fire against a tiger ace. Only doing a scant damage to the mighty Teutonic behemoth. And there you go, directed in the center from the A strange and the six pounder gun. Both, in fact, now opening up the tiger ace. Signing on this veteran free hunter tank, which is probably his best job taking on the tiger. There you go, Stug moving in, trying to get that ace center. Not hitting, but there you go, tiger ace knocks out one of the six pounder gun crews, obliterating the gun. They just may need to deal with it for the center, I think. Can't then again. Six pounder gun number two down. We got the center now rolling in. Sappers moving up. Where's the veteran free hunter tank gun crew? And there you go, gun repulsed. Text for trying to do the job is being obliterated here by the tiger ace. 
Need to get on the six pound gun there. Got one six pound gun is down. Here's the tiger race. But after floating a ton of resources, I think he's going to go for a crocodile to basically just have something to can soak up damage and deal with the infantry. Got the six pound gun crew. No, he goes for the fireflies. It's not going for a crocodile after all. And there we go. We got the uh, rapid maneuvers they've been using the six pound gun. Nice uses, though, in this case, didn't really amount to much. Down another 47 versus 137. Reffler is still very much in the defense here versus Jesslin. Just run around, I think, go folks on just this part of the map. It's not really tried to happen. We're just more aggressively. Plus, he's just overall been very defensive in nature and uh, mindset. Centaur receiving repairs. Firefly almost down there for Refro. But will it be enough against Jesslin's armored might? And almost 1200 munitions! 134, 5 versus 144. And there you go, got the Firefly out, the third one there for Refro. Will this one be the one that does the trick? Nobody just ended up as dead as the other two. Without really doing much in the terms of damage to Yeslin. And the 21st Panzer to be shown. Coming in the fire from the sections. Firefly joining in the fun there. Revealing to Jesslin. There's another Firefly out, by the way. Good in the Panzer 4, which is very close to the ace level. Ace fixed up there, 38 kills. Quiet in, in uh, the northern half of the map. And I feel so fast not to play. But there he goes, getting a bit more fire under his feet. Just playing a bit more aggression, a bit more valor, maybe here versus Jesslin. It's only kind of forces about weight anymore. He's soon running out of victory points entirely. And now just in setting up for something, approaching a flank here with a tag race. Push up the eastern top going into the section, it's snipers as well. There he goes, Firefly shoots, fails to penetrate the tiger's arm. We got the gunning on being rubbed out, almost, but uh, once more, doesn't quite go in for the kill there. 39 kills there, only sent anti aircraft tank for an effort out. Pantherbomb's up 20 kills, close to Veteran 3. And we got another 6 pounder gun for Defero. Another 6 pounder gun. He's had lost 6 pounder guns this match, to be honest. Enemy a also noting Refro's actually researched grenades at some point, adding in some uh, anti anti fire power that way and get close enough. An interesting choice, and there he goes. Six pounder gun up, gets a good penetrating hit on the Panzer IV. Another hit on the Ostwin as well. Ostwin, in fact, is almost dead. And there you go, the umpteenth six pounder gun. I mean, how many does he build? There you see, sixth six pounder gun. That is a lot of anti tank guns, ladies and gentlemen. That is a lot of anti tank guns. He's down to 105 versus the 135 of Jessalyn. Games in five, we got the center each moon to deal with that. Section wiped. Quite a loss here for an effort on there. Good. Stook was strange to land for the side. Firefly and the six pounder guns. Almost lose the Stook. Ace gets away though. We got the Tigers moving in. Sent almost gets the Grenadiers, but gets shot out by the Ace. Tiger crew. Fe Firefly almost went to one moving in. Now Firefly falling back. 39 kills still. Six pounder gun explosion to the Grenadiers. Sniper doing what he can with 44 kills. We're now into the line of fire, the center, and there you go, straight in fire. This time a bit better timed off. Firefly down to 41 kills. But, oh, almost taken out by the ace. Almost taken out by the Tiger Ace, but the Tiger Ace itself is almost done, but he gets away. He gets away. Interesting enough, he never used the six pounder gun to support here. He could easily push it over for no reasons. He keeps forgetting about the six pounder gun here, which is better penetration rate of fire, and thus he's able to take on the Tiger Ace. Ah, oh dear, but still. That centaur has seen an incredible amount of action. And it's done an incredible amount of killing. And 
we got 46 kills here on the sniper. Forty-seven. Another section out there for a Lefero. Hastily armed with Bren guns. And whatever they can find in the arsenal. Forty-eight kills in the sniper. Section wing up there, no one to pick up the Bren gun. 75 points left here. Lefro is barely holding on. Direct hit from the far flat on the Panzer IV. No attempted grenade here from referential enough. Got sappers moving up the west side. And a tank in a second. Finally a bit more activity there from Refro. Again a bit more potential being aggressive here versus Jesslin. And the 21st up Panzer is shown here with the 7th armor. Sap Centaur moving hit there, 41 kills. Damage engine on the Panther 4 down to less than half health. Could not push for the Western victory point, maybe in the fuel point. Gun is hanging back here. Refero does not keep pushing, he holds back, he holds back. He's being very cautious here. And there you go, Gun is moving up. Strafing fire, oh not strafing yet, doesn't have the munitions. But he's certainly doing a lot of damage there, 42 kills. Murdering for the Germans. Firefly shoots, penetrates. And then go, good hit, good hit. Section there needs to retreat. Very poor condition there for Defro. We're almost hitting the one hour mark here of the match. Stug. Fixed up, Panzer IV being fixed almost ace level as well. Tag race with 46 kills. Refro stabilizing here by the road as his main front line. Seems not keen on advancing any further. He could in theory consider just back taking for like a four force. So we could actually try and set up a 17 pounder gun to try and stop the Tiger race and maybe the other German arm. I mean. A 17 pounder gun right about here could actually be a big threat for Jesslin who doesn't have the utility to deal with it and make it much harder for him to use his Tigris in general, cover that center victory point. So I do think Raffler should actually consider it's 17 pounder gun. This would be one of the few situations where I think a 17 pounder gun would be a strong choice, actually. That's just me. 52 kills on that sniper, 52 Germans taken out of this world personally. Second he's shot at. Pension hit him from the six pounder gun on the Stug. Better than tank from moving in there. Finding on the center victory point. We got a big smoke from down there from Jesslin to car up there. Tiger is on the move. Tiger is on the six pounder gun. Caught and to tank grenade off on the Pentagon. Need to get his Firefly and other stuff in. Let's support some up. Sappers moving up with PS. Loads of them. Six pounder gun almost taken up. Smoke down from the Pentagon. Tiger is misses. Six pounder gun shoots at the Tiger is. Firefly moving up here, six pounder gun moving up, another one's also slightly there. And there you go, shoots, penetrates here through the side armor on the Tiger Ace, down to less than half health, pop smoke. Firefly continues, Retson T2, Stug nearby though, should not take that lightly. In the East, there, Gundy's being pushed back. Retson T3 on the Panzer IV, he's got an Ace Panzer IV, an Ace Stug, and an Ace Tiger. That's a lot of Aces. Also moving in against the section and the Snap. Sniper, I was about to call him a snapper. 100 points left, Gundy's range to the center here, 44 kills. More hits in the Austrian. Almost got the Gundy's there, but the center, Ace is almost down, 47 kills though. Sixty-four versus ninety-five. This is going to be a close one. This is going to be a close one, ladies and gentlemen. Ref of going for Cromwell here. Jesslin trying to replace his losses thanks to the Tiger Ace still, but he's always oh, maintaining his false crop. Well, he's almost got fourteen hundred munitions now. Grenades off left and right. 
Approaching down there, very good work. He's active. There you go. Attack ground here with the center on. They're going to be small sections moving in. Troops are reinforcing healing. Cromwell almost done. Austin Stuke moving in. Enemy threatening a point. There you go. Six pound on the Stuke pushing it back. Austin doing the troops. They need to pop a grenade here. I think on the gun it is. There you go. Got and Austin down half of the We got Gunners pushing up. Threatening the right flank of Ephra now. Almost got the center. Good to go. Cromwell almost done. Armour being fixed up here for Jesson. He's got a lot of armour need repairs. And there you go. Crumble out for Ephra and the 7th Armour Division. Tigress going ahead here straight into the Crumble's line of fire. Center victory pump being rushed there by the Gunnadiers. Lots of smoke down. Sexton, we're up there. Pop a grenade on the Gunnadiers. Firefly needs to deal with the Tigress. So I'm going to deal with it. Just threaten it. And now the Crom on the west there. Spanning forgotten by Refn. Just gets annihilated here easily by Jesson. He just swarms it. Bit of a tactical mistake there, I think, by Refn. Bit of a tactical mistake. And not one he can afford. Not can afford to throw away tanks like that. Not against your opponent with a lot of armor. <laughs> like that. Still Reflos holding on. 17 pounder gun could still be an idea. Or a Bofors maybe. But I do think a 17 pounder gun would be a really nasty choice versus the Tiger Ace. And the Stug, to be honest. You could also consider mortar emplacement. To count his opponent's mortar, and there you go. More smoke screens. Very good use of this Jesson to help cop his attacks on the victory point again. He sort of throws them around where he sort of has a good idea of Refro's placing most of his stuff so that he neutralized them and forced them to try another move ahead to get into his line of fire. You know, stake back. So, this is some really good moves there by uh, Jesson in that sense. In this case, the assault was a bit thwarted, didn't have enough force behind it. He should have committed more to it than just a few infantry scores. In this regard, Jesson is seemingly getting more conservative, which is causing him to sort of just commit smaller forces, which are much easier. For Efro to deal with, so what Jesson needs to do is actually set up for a much bigger, large scale assault and try to just sweep away Efro in one go because these sort of smaller prick attacks are not necessarily going to work out very well uh, versus uh, Efro can mostly deal with them. 48 kills, almost 50 kills in that center. Smoking down again, Tigrace moves ahead, taking hits from the 6 pounder gun, the Firefly, and the Sniper. Half health already in a matter of seconds. More smoke popped there. 50 points left versus 64. How many casualties are we seeing here? Good lord. Almost 500 losses. Grenades off. Left, right, center. Snutter fire. 57 kills on that sniper. 57 kills. Firefly very close to Vetsony 3. 44 points left. Will Jesson commit to a large scale assault or will he just keep sort of uh, sneaking in forcing in there to get murdered by Refro one by one? I mean, right now, Jesson's attack would probably, I think, better for just pushing up here fast. Well, then something keeps up pressure in the center that way. I'm wondering maybe sneaking in another thing here. That way, trying to envelop Refro's force because right now, this concentrate heavily there. So an attack from all sides could possibly do it. And take with the Tigrace attack from the right angle, it could do a ton of damage. There's a lot of uh, Refro's squishier stuff. And then it just finish off the harder stuff here afterwards. Can Jesslin do it? I mean, in this regard, again, the Tiger is in some ways not helping it because it's restructuring his resource flow so much more. But it's been interesting. I mean, he's had it for almost, I think, half an hour and he's still in the fight. He's still fighting reasonably equally for the referee. Again, the has been very passive, you know, very defensive for a long time. And again, so I was trying to push that. And even then, he's not over committing. He's just, you know, only to this point and no more. Mine's being laid down there. Eh? Not a smoke screen. He's just doing it constantly, I think. Like, he's just, you know, trying to think low reference, a sense of false security. So at some point, he then makes the big push or whatever. And he's just going to think it's just another small one, but it's actually the big one. There you go. He's committing to it. He's committing to it. Smoke screen down there for the Pantral Feather Up Screen. Nine of five. Here, Tiger's going in. More smoke screens. He's going for it. This is it. This is it. Blitzkrieg, mine goes off. Tigrace will drag past. Firefly being targeted. Six pounder guns being fast to up maneuver. There we go. We got the veteran 3 1 turning out rapidly. Ace Panther 4 down. Ace Panther 4 down. Two being overwhelmed. Six pounder gun trying to catch up there. Tigrace taking hit. Six pounder gun in counter support. Sabers need to get in there. Grenade TD popped the Grenadiers. Heavy damage being inflicted. Tigrace almost down. Centaur shredding. 
<laughs> he's shooting at the wrong things. Rushing for the north, Western victory point. Six pointing guns almost got the tie race. Osman almost down. Tank had a section now, almost doing damage. There he goes. Six pointing gun down. Another firefly for that photo. Stuke taking heavy hits here. Oh, mine goes off. Almost got the ace. Almost got the ace. Sniper firing at the tag race. <laughs> Osman got the eventually three anti tank and Stuke running for the saps. They were pushed back. 14 points left versus 64. Uh, rushing for the other victory point. Yes, it is barely hanging on. And the ace finally goes down. The ace is down, ladies and gentlemen. The beast has been slain. Goes the Ostwind. Penetrating hit. They's almost got it as well. All three victory points on control of Gessling. Referee needs to get out there fast. Ostwind down. Ostwind down. Panzer 4 on the way for him. Sniper's there and they're gonna do a Stuke. Oh, Panzer 4 there in that one. Coming with the Stuke though. 14 points left. Sex moving in. They need to grenade the Pioneers. Flash them off. Flash them off. Grenade the shits. There you go. Pushed away. 44 versus 14. Holy smokes. This is a crazy fight. Oh, no, no, he moved off the point. Refero, no, you moved off the point. <laughs> you moved off the point. Refero, get back there, you beagle. 60 kills on the sniper. This could very well be it for G... Uh, uh, Jesslin, he's... They must, this might just be GG. 25 points left versus 14. You saw, I think, was a bit too clumsy. So he could have used a bit more finesse and a slightly increased angle there on the eastern side, but... Ah, uh, 12 points left. 11. Last will take points away. 10 points left. And that's it. That's GG. Refero wins. Barely. He almost lost him. But there you go. GG. One hell of a crazy match right here on Crossroads. Heavy losses on both sides. Almost 500 casualties, numerous tanks and anti-tank guns obliterated in this fight involving a Tiger Race, Panzer Force, Stooks, flooding almost 1400 munitions and what not. It was really close to Verfrey, got way to defensive one point, was able to slip push back and Jesson himself I think ended up suffering from tunnel vision attacking head on instead of trying to out maneuver Verfrey, hit for the other points, forced him to have to react instead of lagging to establish this sort of nucleus. We could just move to defend and then he attacked it in on smoke helped out a bit but even then the assault range issues he couldn't keep pace with infantry to help clear out the anti-tank guns which then took a heavy toll on all of his armor so some brutal warfare right here on crossroads i sure hope you enjoyed this match i hope you learned something from it if you did you know subscribe like share comment on it if you like to do do consider donating or pledging on patreon support the propaganda cast and allow me to keep doing this Links for that in the video description. This is Imperial signing off. See you all tomorrow for another sunny episode. Cheers.